Welcome to this session on placing curtain wall. Now the curtain wall tool is a little different than the door and window tool. It does allow you to place, modify, and manipulate curtain wall element types that include curtain wall, storefront, ribbon windows, and punched openings. Now these can be placed as linear or byline. They can be placed as arcs or curves and along in a drawing element and even by drawing a shape on an elevation. Once placed, they can be further manipulated by moving or copying mullions across panels to create a desired pattern. So we're going to place some curtain wall on the, the back side of this building. That means we need to rotate our view around so we can see the back. Now there is a dynamic rotation on the view. If you go to rotate view, we can then select and move like this. But there's also a screen menu tool, and this one's a good one to know. If you hold your shift and control click key and then right click, there's a number of different tools on here, different display styles, the ability to, to spin the view or rotate the view, turn the camera on and off. But it also has the four isometric views, front left, front right, but also back right and back left. So for instance, I can select the back right isometric here and we get that back isometric view. And we're going to place our curtain wall here between bays B and C, which would be here in our top view. So let's go ahead and select the curtain wall tool. And you should have a system in there called example storefront. And you can see it's already been predefined with the type set to storefront. We have a sense distance. You can choose the how you want the mullions to meet the frame. Basically, are the verticals continuous or the horizontals continuous? And then how do they meet the frame? Is the frame continuous or the mullions? This is set to continuous verticals with a continuous frame. So we can do the layout in each direction, horizontal or vertical. We can select a spacing, we can give it a fixed distance, or we can select a number of panels, but we can also select a pattern. So in this case, we've selected a pattern and it's set so that the first one is one foot six, the second one is eight foot six. If you notice up here, the height of, of the entire system is 10 feet, so it only repeats the pattern once. If we had a taller curtain wall, it would continue to repeat that pattern. Now in the vertical direction, it's set to a fixed diff distance and we're going to center that. So in other words, we'll, our odd bays will be on both ends. And we've got that vertical spacing at five feet or 1500 millimeters. Now I will point out on any of these tools, this would be true for the doors or the windows or the walls. There is an option here on this pull down to save this catalog item as. So in other words, if I had gotten this all set up a certain way and I wanted to save that so I could place it again and again in my model, I might want to say save catalog item as. You can see it's gonna give me an example and maybe we'll just rename it and call it my storefront and select okay. Goes out and creates that little thumbnail. That's why you see the file change there, but then put you right back where you were. And you can see now, I'm actually placing a different catalog type. It's called My Storefront. So that's a quick way to add data to your data set. Now that's saved in this particular work set. It would be available on this project. And then we'll just scroll down, see some of the other settings here. Um, so for instance, we can select a, a glazing type, uh, the, the profiles that are being used for the mullions and the frame. And then on the placement ribbon, we set again, our placement options. So we're just going to place by line. The height of the curtain wall is going to be 10 feet, just like our windows and door. I'm going to use the, the left justify, which is basically going to be the back of the curtain wall. We're just going to line that up with our, our drywall here on this wall. And so I'm going to start over here at column line C. I'm going to find that intersection of the column line and my drywall, face of drywall there and select that point. And then again, I just wanna make sure I'm going along my X axis there. So I'm gonna use the enter key just to make sure that I'm locked on that. And then 
come over here and select the next column line. And that places our curtain wall, and we see it there in our isometric view. I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog now. Now, curtain wall's interesting because once it's placed, you're able to modify, for instance, the spacing of these mullions. We can add more mullions, we can delete mullions, we can change that panel that we put in there. So let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to hover over one of those mullions and select it, and notice I get these handles. If I hover over that middle handle, you can see I have a little toolbar pops up, and I have the ability to, inst for instance, to delete that particular mullion. Now I could delete just that mullion from here to here, or I can delete the entire line, so that entire vertical. And that's the same, I could move it and copy it, just that section of the frame, or I could do the entire line. I can also turn on and off its visibility. So if I, for instance, toggle the visibility here, you can see that the frame goes away, I still have a, like a butt joint there. If I were to actually delete it, then I wouldn't even have the butt joint. It would be a single piece of glass. So let's try this. Let's select the move line icon here. Now you'll see our AccuDraw pops up and we can move this over. So we did a five foot spacing or 1500 millimeters. If I want half of that, I would do two and a half. I could also just snap to that frame there. That would get me to the midpoint. So we move that mullion. Now let's select it again, and this time let's copy it. So we're, again, we're going to copy the whole line. And this time I'm going to copy five feet in the other direction. So now I've just adjusted my spacing a little bit there. So I have a slightly different pattern. Then if you want to try, I'm going to select that this piece of the frame here, and I'm just going to delete that little bit of horizontal mullion there so that I get a full panel in here, and I'm going to do the same on this side. And then if I wanted to, I could change this glazing panel. So I'm going to actually, this time I'm selecting the panel. Notice I have one handle there. If I hover over it, again, I, I have those visibility options where I could just make the panel disappear, but I'm going to select the modify properties. So for instance, instead of glazing type one, Perhaps I want to make that a spandrel panel. So I've got a, a spandrel type one. And we'll change that. And then you can see how that now renders differently. Right. Do the same over here. And we'll change that one to spandrel type one. And finally, we'll look at these intersections. So again, I'm going to select one of my frames here. And if I hover over that end handle, you'll see I'll get different icons showing how those two frames could intersect. Now, just note that the, the magenta or pink colored indicates the, the frame you have selected. So you might have to kind of rotate those images a little bit in your mind. But um, for instance, if I wanted this to, to miter in all directions, I could select that one. And you can see now how I've got that mitered in all directions. And you could Do the other one as well there. I'll rotate this one into a back view just so we can see that in pure elevation. So there's our, our curtain wall place. Now we'll rotate this back to our isometric view and fit. So now we've got our ground floor fairly well started at least and, and modeled at least the exterior of it. Now we're going to take this model and we're going to copy it and modify it to create the next two office floors. So we'll do that in the next session. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.